everyone, this is Shrivasti Sen Gupta, 4th semester BA trainee of Siligri Therai BA College and Siligri Primary Teachers Training College. Welcome to another academic online session. Well, as already told to you in my last video, I was dealing with the chapter entitled as Footprints Without Fit of Class 10 CBSE Board. And I had also mentioned that I will be dealing with the topic into two halves. And therefore, today I have come with the remaining half of the chapter. In today's lesson, I will be concluding the remaining portions and at the same time, I will be also discussing about the characters as well as the theme and title of the story. Now, before I proceed with the remaining part, let me just tell you in a quick glance what we have already studied in our previous class. In the previous class, I had told you about the scientist by the name Griffin who consumed some drugs in order to become invisible. And what did he do in return? He actually misused his powers and with that, misusage of power, he actually discriminated all the laws and regulations and did crimes after crimes by robbing people, by murdering people and actually making a chaos all over. Now what happens at the end? Will he be alive or will he be dead or will he again become invisible? In order to know, just keep watching today's lesson. Hmm. In the last class, we have seen how Griffin inappropriately paid heed to the law and order and maintained a lifestyle filled with robbing and stealing, so much so that he became alienated from the rest of the society. In order to free himself from the humanity, he boards the train and goes to a nearby village near Iping, whereby he seeks shelter in two hotel rooms. This is where we had ended. And we had also seen how his interaction with Mrs. Hall, the owner of the inn, actually created a suspicious mind within her. Actually, his appearance was too much horrible for her to digest the fact. And moreover, his body language spoke of something mysterious. Therefore, Mrs. Hall considered him to be as an eccentric scientist. In today's video, let us see what happens next? One fine day, the clergyman and his wife were awakened by some noises in their study room. When they were coming downstairs, they could hear the sound of money being taken from the clergyman's desk. Now, who is the clergyman? Well, clergyman is known as a priest, okay? The clergyman held a metal rod in his hand and flung the door open. And as soon as he opened the door, he said surrender as he thought he had caught the thief. To their surprise, they couldn't see anyone. They looked under the desk, behind the curtains, and also up the chimney, but the person was nowhere to be seen. Yet the desk had been opened, and the housekeeping money was gone. Then the clergyman kept on saying, extraordinary affair, the whole day, because he was shocked by the incident. But the things that happened with Mrs. Hall's furniture were much more fascinating and intriguing. Mrs. Hall and her husband woke up very early and were surprised as the door to the guest room was open. Usually his rooms do remain closed and locked. He used to get very angry if anyone tried entering his room. It was an opportunity and Mrs. Hall did not want to miss it. They decided to investigate when they saw that nobody was inside the room. His bed sheets were cold, which showed that he must have been up for a while, and also all the bandages that he used to tie around his face were lying around the room. Suddenly, Mrs. Hall heard a sniff close to her ear, and Griffin's hat that was lying on the bed post flung towards Mrs. Hall and hit her on her face. 
Then the chair in the room dashed itself, hitting Mrs. Hall in her legs. As they got scared, Mrs. Hall and her husband were going out of the room when the chair closed the door and suddenly a sound of slamming the door and locking were heard. This terrorized Mrs. Hall and she was about to fall down from the stairs. She was convinced of the thought that there were spirits in her inn's room and that the stranger had caused this to happen. She moaned that her mother used to sit in the chair which hit her legs and thought that how could it rise up against her. The neighbors of Mrs. Hall thought that it was witchcraft which had caused such a thing to happen. When the news of the burglary at the clergyman's house reached other people in the town, everyone started suspecting the strange scientist. Suspicion grew stronger on him when he produced ready cash for his payment at the inn, even though he had told some time back that he did not have money and was waiting for a check to arrive. The village constable was called for and Mrs. Hall did not want to wait for him. She went straight to Griffin as he had appeared from the empty bedroom at the inn. She asked him what had he been doing upstairs to her chairs and furniture. She also asked him how he did come out of the empty bedroom or enter the locked bedroom. The scientists became really angry and started shouting that they don't understand who or what he was and decided to show them the truth. He removed his bandages, whiskers, spectacles and also his nose. It took him just a minute to do all this and the people in the bar were horrified as they looked at the headless man. Mr. Jeffers, the constable of the village, were surprised as he saw that he had to arrest a man without any head. But Jeffers still wanted to do his duty as he knew that the magistrate wanted him to arrest the person and it did not matter that he had a head or not. As he threw away more and more of his clothes, he became more and more invisible and finally, after Griffin removed his shirt, he was nowhere to be seen and Jeffers was struggling to arrest a man who had become completely invisible. People who tried helping Jeffers were also struggling as they were hit by blows from nowhere. As Jeffers made his last attempt to catch hold of the invisible man, he was knocked unconscious by the invisible man. Everybody was shouting, hold him repeatedly, but Griffin had set himself free from them and nobody could understand how to catch him. With this, we have actually come to the end of her story. And now that we have already discussed the main gist and the summary of the story, let us have a good idea about the characters. In the story, you will be finding three characters, Griffin, Mrs. Hall and Jeffers. Now Griffin is a scientist with a flawed brilliance. He discovers the formula for turning the human body invisible and tries it on himself. He feels powerful as an invisible man and sets his landlord's house on fire. He goes about stealing things and harming people, but his life becomes lonely and miserable. He has to stay naked in the biting cold. He is homeless, hungry and penniless. He is forced to run everywhere like a pretty criminal. The next character that we came across was Mrs. Hall. Mrs. Hall, as you know, is the owner of the local inn at Iping, where Griffin stayed after he fled London. She is a sharp woman with strong business acumen and is happy to receive Griffin as he paid her cash without bargaining. She puts up with his eccentric ways for the money she gets from him. 
she is superstitious as she is convinced that her furniture is haunted by spirits she is also courageous as she does not hesitate to confront griffin and ask him to explain his mysterious behavior and last character of the story is of course jaffers the constable mr jaffers is the village constable who is sent to arrest griffin he is surprised when he arrives as he doesn't know how to arrest a headless man but mr jaffers is not the kind of man to digress from the path of duty he is brave and proceeds to arrest griffin with or without his hate he struggles with griffin even though he cannot see him and fights his best as he can speaking about the theme of this story what did you learn well footprints without feet brings out the misery of a brilliant scientist who adopts a lawless path upon turning invisible his aspiration of unequaled power remains unfulfilled when he becomes homeless and he has to wander hungry cold and utterly miserable he eventually regrets his decision as he gets alienated from the society footprints without feet the very title is quite justifiable isn't it because it is the story of a scientist who turns himself invisible he is penniless and due to this he becomes a homeless wanderer he is forced to roam naked in the biting cold as wearing clothes makes him visible he is lonely hungry and without shelter this section from h e wells novel describes his miserable condition and how his footprints give him away on one occasion and is therefore aptly titled so students with this we have actually come to the end of the second part of the chapter i hope you have got a pretty good idea with regard to the story this story is not just a story this story also has a moral message and that is in order to live in the society and also to survive in the society it is very 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 important to follow rules and regulations and also the decorum but if you misuse the power which is instilled within you there are chances that you will be alienated just like griffin we are not like griffin nor are we scientists to consume drug and become invisible but till the time we are in the society it is extremely very important to maintain a good relationship and also to understand how to survive amongst the lot thank you